Alright, howdy neighbors, and welcome back to How Stories Die. It's been a little bit since I last played, so... We'll see if I remember. During the following days, I, pr I practiced as Jensai with Jensai on taking on someone down silently. I only train on pillow sex, but I'm confident about doing it, doing the real thing. I am ready. 11 p.m. The night before the operation. Come on, Horace, just sleep already. Resting is essential for tomorrow's operation success. I know that, but the thought of that only makes me more nervous. <sighs> I am inside this sleeping bag for over three hours, and I am still not even close to sleeping. I keep wondering about the same thought. Will I be able to kill without any hesitation? I know I told Jinsai I won't hesitate to kill, but... Damn it, this is so hard. This is so freaking hard. I'm not some cold-hearted go golem, but I am supposed to behave like one. I know that can mean the difference between life and death. I know killing without hesitation is the right thing to do. I want to kill without hesitation, and I am planning on doing so. But I'm afraid that the moment of truth, a dim doubt will catch me off guard and delay me. And the frustrating part is that I won't know until- What was that? The sound of a paper sliding under the door. Why would someone be awake this late at night? Oh no, this better not be what I think it is. I walked up to the door and looked down. There really is a paper there. A letter. Ah, shit. I examined the letter. It was really dark, so I had to put a... Put the letter really close to my eyes. To Prince Horace, the first of his name, from the one you seek. Is it... The one you seek? Is it the traitor? The traitor sent me a message? That means... I rushed on the door and ran down the hallway. I searched frantically across all the rooms. Where did he go? He must he must have been near the door a few moments ago. Damn it, I was, I was so close to finding him. I might as well just open the letter and look at what's inside. The doctor's made it hard to see, but I managed to read it. Don't get close to Haruka tomorrow. If you do so, you will die. What? Why would the traitor be concerned about me? Why would I die if I get close to Haruka? Is the traitor planning to kill Haruka tomorrow? I have to tell her. I ran to Haruka's room and knock on the door. No answer? Well, in normal circumstances, it would be rude, of, rude to just go in. But it's different. I open the door. Hey, Ha- Something hard hit me in the head, and I lost my balance. Before I could scream, before I could scream someone locked both of my hand and pinned me to the floor. My face crushed between the hard ground while both of my hands were tied. That I felt someone on top of me. Panic took hold of me. Is is that the trade Horace? Harka? Harka abruptly released me. S sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I thought you were the enemy. Please forget Harka, that doesn't matter now. Something really bad happened. I received a letter I don't say it. Huh? Someone just spoke to me. Someone right here with us. If you say that to Haruka, I will kill you instantly. Act normally. Haruka noticed the a hint of terror in my eyes. Horace, is everything alright? Your eyes are shaking. Is it related to the thing you were trying to say? N no, I think it's fine. The breathing stopped. I felt something sharp kissing my neck. But when I looked down, there was nothing. Are you sure about it? The traitor, he's right behind me, completely invisible. And yet... So close yet, I can't reach. Yeah, totally fine. I must the most normal voice I could produce in this crazy situation. Okay then. And that Haruka doesn't really believe me. What were we trying to say earlier? About a bad thing? You said you received a lit something. I tried to think of a disease that starts with lit. Oh yeah, I think I received a Larry Wheel. What the frick is this? 
Dysondritis? One of the one of those annoying winter diseases. Horus, that's a rare auto seminal dominant genetic disorder. The results it results in dwarfism and short legs and arms. I don't think you can catch that. And I've pressed on my neck harder. Yeah, I got confused. Hurry up, brain. Think of another thing. Right. I know now. The name of the disease is... Luciansis. You mean maple syrup here? <laughs> what? Yeah. I began to... to pressure even harder on my neck. Super rare disease that I discovered during the first months of birth. Often comes with a critical brain... With a critical brain damage, and most infants that suffer from it are dead by the fifth month. Also, your urine and blood should smell like maple. Yeah, that's it's definitely like that. My blood has started to smell like maple recently. It's supposed to smell like that from the moment you are a baby. Also, you're supposed to die. You were supposed to die 18 years ago. A single drop of blood is split across my neck. Horus, there is blood on your neck. Yes, it's because of my disease. It causes my blood to smell like smell like urine that smells like maple. Horus, you're weirder than usual. What are you doing? Why are you suddenly behaving like this? Can it be? No, no, no. Everything is totally fine. I, I know. I'll prove it to you. Here. You can now smell it for yourself. Just wait a little bit. I'll prove it to you in a sec. This is absurd. This is just sheer insanity. I'm going to bite myself in front of the girl. I like while an invisible demon sticks a knife in my neck. I know how crazy the thing I'm going to do is, but I can blame panic for that. The looming fear of death can make one go very far. I bit my hand mercilessly until enough blood came out. We are crunching and munching. Okay, I decided to stop using the right click because it doesn't work all the time. So it, it will take me a little bit longer. Get- Huh? It- It really does. Your blood. It really does smell like maple. See, just like I told you- Wait, what? Uh, I mean, yeah. Horace, you are a medical miracle. The knife withdrew back. Thanks? You, you are amazing, Horace. C can I examine you? Our genes might be the solution to produce super demons and superhumans. That might be going too far. No, thank you. Please, 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 please. What do you mean by examine? I need to harvest some of your bronchopulmonary segments. Harvest? Isn't that something important? Well, you might find it more difficult to breathe, but I assure you that my nose is off limits. Actually, it's two lungs. That's even worse. Such a shame. I will definitely harvest it. Oh my god! Oh no! We just said no! Is she serious? I need to be extra careful now. Okay, I am now going back to sleep. Good night. Good night. Wait. Before you go, I need to clean all the blood here. Don't worry, I will take care of it. Will you just clean it, or are you planning to do other- See you tomorrow. Horka slammed the door right in front of me. <laughs> oh, this is so stupid. So serious, but so stupid. Well, if that blood helps her somehow create a super demon, I want some credits too. <sighs> Good job, Horace. Although I wouldn't have handled the situation the same as you. That was to that was totally like she told me he was like. <laughs> now go back to sleep, just like anybody would. The knife was no longer resting on my neck. Where are you? What do you want from me? Dots. Total silence. I lean backward, but I don't hit anything. Spirit is gone, or maybe he wasn't there from the beginning? 
I would have searched more, but I sense that if I were to do that, the knife would return. Jodie can kill me anytime he wants to. Should I tell Haruka about it? Probably shouldn't. Only when we are in a very private place. And even then, it's a bit scary. I will go to sleep just like you told me. As the sleeping sack enveloped me, I thought about the trader's voice. It was definitely a male, and quite familiar. Okay, Horace, just keep the trader's voice fresh in your memory, and compare it to everyone's voice tomorrow. That was my last thought before I fell asleep. Dots. It is graduation ceremony. I forgot about him! Oh no! <laughs> this man straight up killed himself on TV! <laughs> And now we would like to present the honor roll. Blah 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 One of them is going to be me. But it's a really who who deserves to be an honor student? You weren't the one who wrote those stories. It was us, the characters. But I created you. So I'm just as you did you didn't write the stories. You don't deserve anything. You're just a fraud. No, I'm not. I'm not a fraud. Fraud, fraud, fraud. And now, our greatest student will give a speech. He published multiple books. Each and every one of them set new record and sales in his genre. You didn't publish it. You didn't write it. Fraud. No, you're wrong. Please welcome the best writer that ever set foot on this campus. It a live not. Those claps, those compliments, they aren't yours, thief. Thank you, thank you very much. Get out of the stage, you scum. Deep inside, you know that you didn't deserve it. I'm honored to be here today, before you, as a graduate of Ben Orion Academy of Modern Literature. Fraud, fraud, fraud. When I hear people praising my work and compl complimenting me, it's worth all the sweat I shed to bring my story to life. It isn't your work. You didn't break any sweat. You took the fruits of our labor and pretended it's yours. No, no, stop saying that. Literature was always a friend to humanity. As a society, it brings us together and strengths already existing bonds. As an individual, it inspires us to change... It inspires us and changes us to be better and wiser versions of ourselves. Fraud, 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 fraud. I'm not a fraud, I'm not a fraud. This is why I am proud to graduate from here as an author. Fraud, 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 fraud. I'm not- uh, no. I love writing. It's one of the things I love most in the world. Fraud, 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 fraud. Stop it. I hope everyone here can share my love for writing. And we got a couple more frauds. My achievements didn't come out of nowhere. It was a long and hard process. Am I really a fraud? What am I doing? Stealing other people's work? How did I get so low? Every day perfecting and cultivating a story that isn't mine? I can't take it anymore. I won't do any more pretending. Thank you for having me here. No, no, I don't deserve to be here. The crowd looked confused. Um, it eh? What was that? I didn't write the stories, I'm just a fraud. I lied to you all. The crowd looked shocked. People started whispering to one another. Then who wrote the stories? It was them, the characters. The characters wrote my stories. I'm just a liar that stole their credit. The crowd looked even more confused than before. But that's going to change. I am not going to rely on the characters anymore. I'm going to create the perfect story just like theirs. But this time it will be completely mine. Just you wait, characters. Just you wait. I'm going to have my perfect story. It's going to break any record your story set. And you know why? Because it will be mine, and I am perfect. I stormed out of the graduation ceremony. Wait, wait a day. Please let us publish a new book. Then why are you asking me? Go and ask my characters for permission, goddammit. I throw a bottle of water at the group of leeches. 
and ran away. I know I said I will make my own perfect story, but how will I actually do that? Every time I tried writing a story with my own plot, the ending felt unnatural for the characters. What? Why does that happen? It's because I don't understand the characters? No, I understand them perfectly, it's not that. So understanding the characters is not enough, I must go beyond that. The only thing greater than understanding the characters is to become a character yourself. But that's utterly impossible, how frustrating. Really? Are you sure it's impossible? What do you mean? Of course it's impossible. Human... Human can't become a character. Humans can't even talk with characters. What if I tell you... What if I tell you that you're talking with a character right now? What? This is nonsense. You're just my thoughts. You don't have any will of your own. That's where you're wrong. Characters are real and they live inside your brain. They reside within your imagination and leech off your brain. What do you think happens when you imagine characters? You're giving life and life to them inside your mind. In fact, the characters are always living in your subconscious. That's where the storytelling happens. The characters are living in the story inside your mind, and you just copy their lives into the pages. The reason the characters are acting unnaturally in your stories is because you structure your plot from the very start. You don't let the character live their stories as they want to. You tell them what to do. So you can understand the characters all you want, but that doesn't compare to the characters living in the story by themselves. The background is moving, right? Because it feels like it is. I hate that. I see. I see! It all makes sense now. Now I understand all my past failures. I see it so clearly now. Who would have thought the characters are real? That they live inside our mind. And you, yes you, the voice of the characters, your existence is my proof. You told me all of that for a reason, right? You know that only I can create the perfect story. You know that only I can see the truth to create the perfect story, because I am the perfect author. And now that I know how to talk to characters, and where do they live, it's time for the next step, to control them. Once I figure out a way to control the characters, the door to my perfect story will open. Dots. What the fuck happened to the story, man? The Most Miserable Girl, Part 3 A single hand rose from the ground, all lonely in the graveyard. Her head back on her shoulders, the girl swore revenge on the humans who betrayed her. But most of her anger was directed toward that tall and blonde king. She went to the distant lands and met her children. She lived with them as one big family. The girl used Satan's unnatural intelligence to make the family thrive. It was not long before the family expanded to bigger and better scales. From one house to a village, from a village to a city, from a city to a kingdom. And yet the girl didn't age one bit. By that time the girl was ready to have her revenge. The tall blonde king may have already died, but his descendants are still alive. The girl's family and the human kingdoms waged a great war. Although the girl's family was much smaller than the human kingdoms, they held their ground using magic and advanced weapons the girl invented with Satan's help. Despite the magic, the weapons and superior tactics, the family lost because of the n numbers disadvantage. The human kings didn't know what to do about the girl. No matter how many times they killed her, she returned to life. One of the court wizards proposed a great idea. Instead of killing her, just create a great constant conflict within within inside her. He brought a strange device and pointed it toward the girl. And that was the last time the girl was seen. The end.
Story sucked. Boo! <laughs> 3 p.m. The day of the operation. Come on. I know they're here somewhere. I went through every nook and cranny of this room. I know I put it here. Oh. May I spot a shiny metallic... Some shiny metallic devices. There. There they are. I took one and examined it. The white liquid inside them looks so peaceful. Honestly, I'm such a coward. I told Jensai I will be ready to kill the criminals without hesitation, and yet... Hey, Brother Horace! Where are you? We need to get going soon. The voice came from the other room. Five of them will do. I grabbed a few and put them deep inside my pocket. I'm coming! Wait for me! After a few more last moment directions and tips from Haruka, we said our goodbyes. Good luck, everyone. As long as you stick to the plan, everything shall be fine. Yo ho ho! Bye bye! I'm gonna. I'm going to kill an arm! You are not going to actually kill him, right? Well, well, who knows? Perhaps I will be given a golden opportunity. But your mission is more important, so good luck. Arco, right, don't die on me, okay? I'll be very sad. Why would you be sad if I shall die? My life is... has no worth to you other than being a helping hand. Also, I won't die. I never do. I have a few questions about that sentence. Are you all done with this nonsense? The heist will be done by the time you're done blabbering. None of the voices match the traitor's voice. Perhaps the traitor altered his voice. Or maybe he isn't in the order? Brother Toshiaki is right. Forgive me for overextending my words of goodbye. Complete the mission successfully, everyone. We all nod in agreement. After that, we all start moving toward our positions. Haruka and Toshiaki went to the sewer. Me and Jensai went to the surface. And Aiza went to whatever location the arm was in. We were hiding under the wagon for over two hours. Do you think they'll ever come? Shh. Do you want anyone to hear you? You are a wanted criminal. Oh, he's right. I should just shut up. My heart is pounding in excitement. Once again, I'm going in. Once again, I will put my life on the line. Dots. I hear them. A large group of demons. They're getting closer. Yet I still can't see them. Seven. No, eight of them. I finally saw their feet. Eight demons in total. But I hear the sound of the wagon being dragged alongside the ground. My heart pulse went crazy. I knew that any, any one of... I knew that if any one of them heard me, I'd be dead in less than a second. Jinsei put his hand over my mouth. He wasn't shaking at all. We waited silently until all the demons got inside the wagon. One demon in the driver's seat and the other seven hiding inside. Only when they were all inside, Jinsei lifted his hand from my mouth. I looked at his face and he looked at, back at me. His lips whispered one word to me. Go. I got up as silently as I could and entered the back side of the wagon. I held the explosives tightly so they wouldn't make any sound. So I'm just supposed to choose one jug, right? I laid the explosives on the floor and pulled out a syringe from my pocket. The white liquid still shined, telling me, Horace, you are not wrong. My hand was on the jag, ready to open it. Here we go. In three, two, one, I quickly removed the cover and looked in. Damon decided to open his mouth and look at me with surprise. I immediately put my hand on his mouth to shut him up. <laughs> I attempted not to scream as the demon's teeth penetrated the palm of my hand. I shoved the syringe right into his shoulder and pressed it. The biting stopped. Like a statue, the demon went into sleep mode. I don't remember anything that happened. I pulled him out of the jar and silently dropped him out of the wagon. Fortunately, the demons in the other jar just didn't hear anything. Shit, my hand still hurts like hell. It was bleeding bite marks all over it. 
are the sharks and demons related? That would explain those crazy teeth. I get over the pain and loaded the explosives into the jar. Our mission accomplished without any problems. Good luck, Jinsai. It's up to you now to blow those up. I'm ready to jump out of the wagon and run away before anyone sees, but then... Don't get close to Haruka tomorrow. If you do so, you'll die. Will, will Haruka actually die? I didn't speak to her yesterday because I was afraid the trader might listen. Shit, I'm so stupid at not telling her. I have to tell her right now. I'll save Haruka just like I saved her last time. I'll stay in the wagon. Honestly, I can't believe I was mad enough to do that. I opened the jag, which I filled with explosives and jumped right in. Laying inside a jar full of explosions, <laughs> explosives, I thought to myself how crazy it is. But there was no going back now. The wagon already started moving. That means Jinsai already killed the driver. Next stop, Bodus Mansion. Shit, the explosives begun to move. One of them fell on my on my head. It didn't explode. The next one might. I pinned the explosives on to the side of the jug to prevent them from moving. Between my pounding heart and the sound of the explosions rubbing against the jug. At every moment one of them can explode on its own, and I will die instantly. The sheer pressure knowing you could die any second. Should have broken me, yet it didn't. My heavy breathing didn't turn to panic. I remained still, breathing in and out with sweat all over my face. From where does the sudden power of composure come from? I don't know. Maybe it's because of the little experience I had with life and death situations. Maybe because my determination to save Haruka. Whatever it is, thank you. The carriage stopped. Jinsai... Does Jinsai stopped? For your grandma trying to cross the street? No, this is way too long of a stop. We arrived. At any moment, Jensai will should come and open the jug. I left the dagger to mark which one has the explosives. Come on, Jensai, you could do it. Is it Jensai or is it one of the mammons? I saw my breathing come from my mouth. The sound of the steps grew stronger and stronger. Who is it? And it's placed on the jug's lid. I looked up as the light of day pierced the darkness inside the jug. Hey, buddy! How you doing, man? This I see you. Thank God. But I was the only one showing any sign of happiness. As I stood frozen, a small flame inside his palm. Then a wild surprise. What are you doing here, brother horse? That was about to answer him. But then the other drugs opened. Out of one of the drugs, a single hand broke out. A hand was. The hand was full of scars. Looking at it, my inner survival instinct told me that the hand took many lives. And following that hand, popped out an ugly head with a nasty smile. Oh no. Before I could say anything, all the jugs were open. They were surrounded. Even every one of them was armed. Now that I look at the weapons, I see why I was so afraid before. All the weapons were slightly twisted. What? That doesn't make any sense. The the many bones those weapons crushed caused them to twist. Oh. Heh, looks like we have two stowaways. Let's show them you have to pay for your ride. Or let's get the heavens out of here. Wait, don't. Did I put the hand holding the flame into the explosive jar? Run! I turned my head and ran to the exit. But before I managed to walk more than a step and a half, it happened. A pure light and heat filled the wagon and burned everything inside. Everything went up in flames. I landed on the hard ground outside. Wait, how am I outside? How am I alive? I was right inside the wagon. I should have died. And a large body dropped on me. It smelled like a large chunk of meat that was burned to a crisp. I looked sideways and saw a yellow gem on the ground. No! <laughs> oh 
my god! Some prince you are! This man just straight up died for you. I failed. I tried to protect Haruka and on accident. Cough, cough. The body above me started moving. I gotta take a closer look at Jinsei. Cough, cough. He looked really bad. He didn't get hurt from the fire, but he inhaled a ton of smoke in the process. I burst the coal off his face and put him on my back. You okay there? Can you talk? Yeah. I carried him out of range of the smoke. Thank you. Shut up. I need to get you some medicine or a doctor. We return to the base that- No, I won't survive till then. Don't just shut up, right? I hated to admit it, but his condition was really bad. Both of his arms suffered critical damage due to the smoke. It's a miracle he even managed to survive. Why did he do it? Why did he save me? No, of course. Stop thinking stupid thoughts. Your goal now is to save him. I wonder if I lived a good life. His eyes, eyes suddenly open in surprise. For the horse, look behind you. I turned my head backward. The single demon in a white suit ran toward the mansion. Shit, he's going to warn his friends. I think the explosion was supposed to kill all of them. I have to stop him before he warns the backup squad. That would put Sister Haruka in great danger. I now turn my back to Jinsai. You're right, but first... It really hurts to stand. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why are you standing... Why are you standing in your place? You have to stop him. In your condition, it should be hard for you to even talk, let alone stand. I might be sure my duty still remains to protect Haruka and create a better world. Now come, we have to protect that source of hope. Jinsai didn't wait for me and started chasing the mammoth guy. I looked at his figure running in the distance in awe. My resolve still has a ways to go. Even then, I'm not sure it would ever reach his level. I smiled and started sprinting after them. The lies of vindication! <laughs> hey, wait. Alright, the screens of the guard desperately trying to follow us from behind. But he was too far to even pose a threat. We already went past the gate into the realm of the mansion. Due to my pretty lame physique, I can only hear Jensai and the mammon guy shouting at each other. You're not getting away. Stay away, stay the fuck away. Shit, I already lost them. Think, Hordes, where are they? They should be heading to the entrance of the sewer. But I... It doesn't make sense for a private house to have an entrance to the public sewer. To the restroom. The only thing... The only place I can think that has some connection to the sewer is the toilet. Good question. The one that shall determine Jinsai's fate. The question in the center of the battle between life and death. Hey, finally found you! I grabbed him by the neck and pulled him close to my face. With an intimidating expression, I asked him the question, Where is the bathroom? I don't... Hidden inside the mansion, following the directions of the guard. Hopefully, what he said about it being a shortcut is true. As for I finally entered the toilet. Oh, so the toilet is just like ours, a big hole in the ground. I was afraid it would be something complicated with pipes and tons of buttons that foreigners like to press all at once <laughs> and then the trauma <laughs> and then have trauma for life. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Speaking of trauma for life, I covered my nose and jumped aside. So when I entered the sewer, I was greeted by an awful smell. But it doesn't bother me at all now. There's more important stuff going on. The steps are echoing throughout the shallow sewer. Easy peasy. We're gonna run in the direction of the loud steps. A wild roar tore through my ears. That roar. That was no human or demon. Not even demons are able to produce such a strong and wild voice. That thing sounds like it was pretty close. I would have increased my speed if I wasn't already investing all of my energy in going forward. Great, just five seconds after I get here and something bad already happened. Dots. The sound of steps stopped. Did the chase for really conclude? And if so, I continued going forward in hopes of finding something. It didn't take a minute before I already found a pretty bad sign, a trail of blood. Fresh blood, going beyond the corner. Whose blood is it? I turned the corner, full of suspense, afraid of the answer. And sigh! The other side was kneeling on the floor, looking down in pain. Horse? Are you okay? Where did the man guy go? Did he injure you? No, that was me. 
I noticed a fat wound on Jinsai's shoulder. Why would you do that to yourself? Get some... Adrenaline. Are you nuts? I took the bloody dagger from the ground. Not only are you half dead, but you also injured yourself further? Leave it be. There is a more important matter. Maybe more important than the fact that you're about to die. Cough, cough. The mafioso was a clone. What? Yeah, you see that puddle over there? The mafioso turned into a puddle of pool of water. So... Some kind of water clone? But he somehow managed to open the door to the toilet, right? What? I can't do that. The one we saw on the surface was real. He probably switched with the water the moment he turned the corner. I went over to the puddle and put my finger in it. Yeah, it's certainly water from the sewer. Our fingers now smell like a dead rat combined with a urine-infused bacteria. It was a water clone, right? I don't think so. He exploded right in the middle of the chase. It's more like transferring his soul into a body of water. His soul re now returned to his body. Okay, there's nothing we can do about it. Let's shoot you first. You can't possibly think chasing him. You can't possibly think of chasing him in your condition. Just I started breathing heavily. You know, Brother Horse. No, I don't. Transferring your soul into water. It's a really complicated spell. Only a true master of magic can perform this trick. I think you know what that means. Told me he went here himself? Why? Probably to make sure the heist was a success. After all, the thief of the... Namagetchen. I still don't know how to say that. Must be a direct order from the king. Hold on, I hear someone behind us. Yes, it's... Shh, I'll take care of them. You should rest here. No, but don't worry. It's my turn to help you. I'm trying to open my dagger. How are you doing? You look like a clown with that knife. Oh, Toshiaki. You're here. Yes, thanks for noting that, Captain Obvious. Wait, horse. Stab Brother Toshiaki. Huh? Wait, now I understand. Sorry, Brother Toshiaki. But we have to make sure that you're not a clone. Why would you think I'm a clone? Tell all about the incident. The arm is here. Good to know. Toshiaki passed the clone test. The blood that came out of his toe was very real. Where's Haruka? Wasn't she with you? Mr. Sniffles was with you, too. Mr. Sniffles? Oh, Mr. Sniffles? He's right behind the corner. He's a little shy around new people. Sniffles, come out. Brother Horace is a friend. Okay. The voice was pretty slippery, like Snake. <laughs> oh my god. Mr. Sniffles is so cute. <laughs> Is gigantic. Mr. Sniffles, meet the new member of the order, Brother Horse. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> this is pretty awkward having a conversation with a giant friendly monster. Horace, this is Mr. Sniffles. He keeps everyone away from our base's entrance. Nice to meet the baby. Nice to meet you. Why did you bring him he- Toshiaki, did you- Are you deliberately not telling me about Haruka? I knew that if I told you, you would do something stupid. Where is she? She went inside the mansion by herself. Fucking knew it. She's going to steal the- Lumiget- Lumiget- Chen? I don't know! Lumigeton! <laughs> Louis Vuitton! <laughs> What? Damn it, I knew she might try something like this. Ah. Uh, since I made a step forward with, while letting out a scream of pain. Excuse me, I have to- You're not going anywhere. We have to treat you immediately. 
The arm is with her. She is in great danger. As I started walking back, there's her sniffles. Sorry. I'm really sorry. There's her sniffles blocked Genocide's path. Get out of my way. Barely walk. I can't just leave her alone against the arm. Well, I can. I couldn't care less about the two of them. And you're coming with me. Why do you even care about me? Just leave me to die like you're going to with Haruka. That's because you're a demon. You're not death incarnate. And I've seen far too many demons die for nothing. Sniffles, carry him. Okay, sorry. Buddy, you are the new best character. It used to be me, Overlord, uh, but it's, it's you. I love you, Mr. Sniffles. I want, like, full DLC. The Mr. Sniffles experience. That's like, totally what I want. Mr. Sniffles tried to catch Jensai in his arms, but Jensai resisted and shoved him away. But the horse is coming too. Sure, but before that, I have some investigating to do. I looked at Jensai, and in response, he stopped resisting. Fine, if it's you, he whispered quietly. Mr. Sniffles grabbed Jensai and put him onto his back. Sorry. Mr. Sniffles, please lick the floor as you walk. Why? The floor is not tasty. How else would Brother Horace be able to find the way back? Aww, no, baby! Toshiaki gave me an ugly look. Baby, if you don't want to, don't. Now then, good luck with your investigation. Nisai gave me one more meaningful look before the three of them disappeared into the darkness. As soon as Toshiaki went out of my line of sight, I rushed out of the sewer. I hope I'm not too late. If I remember correctly from eyes of sketch, the vault is right in the middle of the mansion. 5.50 p.m. <sighs> so I have to follow the route Aizo showed us and I'll eventually meet Haruka. Surprisingly, there is not a single guard in the hallway. Seems like the Mammon guys did a pretty good job finding... No. Fuck. Seems like the Mammon guys did a pretty good job in finding it. Luckily, it works in my favor too. Speaking of luck, a familiar blue-haired girl is running in my direction. Horika. Horika sucked her tracks and smiled at me. Oh, hello there, horse. Why did you suddenly abolish the plan? Why are you trying to steal the... Let me get... I, the book. It's obvious. As long as it stays here, it'll be in danger of being stolen. I was simply moving it to a safer place. It was. I pulled out a small book from a pocket. A round cover... It had was on the verge of crumbling. But... Con contradicting its lame appearance was a shiny purple gem right in the middle of it. Somehow the stone gave me some pretty bad vibes. But that's just a feeling. Recognizing it? Recognizing that? No. But since I asked about the book, I assume that's the book. That's the key of Suleiman. Um, that's the book, not a key. And how does that connect to the other book? The key of Suleiman is another name for the book. Or the Gem of Solomon. Whatever! <laughs> and you could have just answered with that. It's great, now let's get out of here. What do you think I was doing? I don't know that. The arm is here. It's coming this way. But Brother Izo told us he wasn't coming. Brother Izo was wrong. He's going to be here any moment. We have to get out of here right now. He grabbed Haruka's hand and ran back to where I came from. Shut my hands so I can see where I put my fingers out of bottle. I sniffed it. Hey, what are you- It doesn't smell like anything. Oh really, that's great- I suddenly froze in my place. Hey, why did you stop- It just hit me. The danger was here all along. Haruka, check your pocket. What's with the- Just do it. 
Hoka sent her hand inside her pocket. The book is still there, but it doesn't make any sense. Where would he go if not for the book? What is... What is it all about, Horace? Why are you looking so agitated? Haruka, the arm is a master of manipulating water. Even worse, he can put his soul inside water. And that's including sewer water. No. Where? Uh, let me answer your question. The witty voice came from within Haruka. And yet it didn't come from her mouth. Blood. I knew it. I knew it was going to be blood. Knew it. It came from her chest. I already infiltrated your bloodstream, little girl. Knew it. You can't get me out unless you spill all of your blood. Leave the book here, or else I will enter your brain and kill you. Just lay it here nice and easy. No one needs to get hurt. Shit. The situation can't get any worse. He got both of us in a pinch. Harka has no choice but to give her the book. Screw you. Huh? What are you saying? Do you want to die? I don't care. If I'll die, then Horace will just take the book instead. Even if I won't get it now, I will get it later. Now that I know his face. Besides, just bluffing, right? Yes, you are correct. I, I'm not going to die here. I'm going to live and kill the king. Harka opened the book and looked at me. I won't fail. I never fail. Horace, you don't mind- Sister Haruka, this I. This sigh arrived behind us, breathing heavily. Sister Haruka, I came back for you. If the arm is in here, you're in danger. I won't ever abandon you. Is it Gensai? You're dying, right? Your injuries, you won't recover from them, right? That's perfect. A strong chill went down my spine. I would- I could feel that Haruka's aura resonating throughout the hallway. It wasn't evil, it was something else. It was far more sinister than just evil. And so your empty shell shall be useful for the last time. There is an invader inside my body. You just have your soul to destroy the invader. Harko, what are you doing? I I understand. Go on, use it. Wait, what's going on? Stop this madness right now. Don't tell me you're going to. Ars Geodia. The book started shining in a creepy pale light. I'll do it. Ars Theorgia Geodia. What the hell are these words? Stop. Ars Polina. I shoved her gun and tried to grab the book. Ars all motto. I grabbed her hand and wrestled her arm in order to get the book. Don't do it. Finally put Haruka and went in to take the book. I'm so close. Just one more second to snatch it from her hand. Ours Notoria. Oh. Oh, I don't. I don't like it. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I felt the power of the book gathering in the air. I'm moving toward Jensai. But I was completely helpless. I could only watch as the power burst up and shattered my hope for Haruka. I grabbed the book, but it was too late. Oh, Mr. Haruka, because of what you are, destined to be. As I fell to the ground, he had no strength left to get up or continue forward. No! I wish I saw is currently fight. Over control over the arm's water body. Haruka spit the water on the ground. The spit smelled like the sewer. Thank you, Brother Jinsai, for getting that sucker out of my lungs. Goodbye, arm. Goodbye, Brother Jinsai. Haruka drew her dagger and I prepared to stab the spit on the ground. Wait. Let go of me. You. What the hell did you do? Just let me stab the water and then we'll talk. No, the puddle contains Jinsai's soul, too! Here. Must sacrifice him. Must sacrifice him to kill the arm. So just let me fucking go already. Ugh. If you set the puddle, you're going to kill Jinsai too. So what? So what? Are you serious right now? He is your comrade, your brother. 
Are you that cold that you would kill your friends to achieve your goal? Friends? I don't have friends. I have tools. Now get out of my way. No, I won't let you do it. Jensai saved my life earlier and I owe him for that. I grabbed Haruka's arms from behind and dragged her away from the spit mark. Let go of me. If we don't kill him right now, the arm will retake control of his body and use his magic to return to his original body. Haruka bent over and kicked me in the balls. Ugh. And I let her go and held my ball in pain. Ow, wow, ow, ow. It wasn't much higher than normal. Her this opportunity to leave to the spit mark with her dagger. No! I thought I heard an agonized scream from the puddle. Although that may have just been in my imagination. I just heard got pinned her to the ground. We did it, Horace. We killed it. I decided never sleep. The spit mark was replaced with a red puddle. No, god damn it! Her body was shaking in rage. What happened, Horace? Why are you so angry? Fuck you, you evil piece of- I want to punch her, I want to slap her. My hand rose up, and then it went down. I punched the floor next to her head. Now it's time to celebrate. We killed an arm. Why? Why did you do it? This I believed in you. He told you- He said you could be good inside. And- And then you just killed him like a fly. I was so confused and angry. I didn't know what to feel. I hope that I could change Haruka- Crashed down, crashed down on me. Was he led astray this whole time? Dots. The sun finally began to set, but instead of slowly declining, it shone brilliantly and it went out like a massive explosion of light. The light washed down the mansion, cleansing evil and uncovering secrets. Herga's body started to shake. I, I killed Herga, what happened to you? Not that it matters anyway. You're just an evil- Oh, I understand. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Sorry? So when do you say sorry after- I know how much it hurts you. I know you are confused, I know you are angry. You- you don't get- Herka slowly reached out for my cheek. The palm of her hand was smooth and cold. It's okay, everything is okay. You don't know what happened and why. It's understandable, it's normal. Anyone would. Her hand and smile acted like a source of peace and stability. The coolness of her hand resting on my cheek drought the rain the raging river of my anger. But shh, everything will get better. I promise that we will be happy in the end. Everything everything is collapsing all around me. The decision I made so far is the belief that you could be a good person. And now, maybe called the demon who I know. A voice with my pain and confusion. That voice it was the same voice. This it was the same horror guy I knew back in Altaria. I know I'm a bad person. It can't be helped. I am already corrupted. Herka slid beneath me and put her hand on my back. And I'm so grateful for you. For caring for me and I felt Haruka's chest laying on my back. Her hands embraced me. That's what we look like? Huh. Not what I expected, gotta say. We are fucking ripped though for not being able to do anything. Alright, we got a vent CG, gotta save for it. <laughs> for loving me. You knew. Also, that knife is longer than her shorts. That's an issue. <clears throat> of course I did. I knew you were in love with me. And to be honest, I was pretty happy. You know what I just noticed? Just just right now, right in the right in the now. Um Haruk is the only one that we've ever seen event CGs for. Like, we went on dates with, um, what are their names? Rico and Nose? And there wasn't a CG for them. But for Haruka, there was one. And here's another. So I'm wondering if we go on their routes, if we will get event CGs. <clears throat> I was pretty happy. Dots. Haruka's grip tightened. I 
I could feel her heart beating non-stop through her chest. Because? Because I love you too. You do? My emotions became a mishmash of happiness, confusion, and grief. Yes, the moment you saved my life. I saw how kind you are. I realized how far you would go for your friends. And why didn't you say anything? Because I knew you would reject me. No, I wouldn't even dream of- You may say that now. But if you knew the truth, you would have rejected me. And what is the truth? Please, please tell me, I'm so confused and hurt. The Order, the humans, this whole world. They are using you. Herb is breathing. Stroked my neck. I am the only one you can trust. I am your truth. Soon everything will clear out, and you shall see me in my full glory. In the seas of chaos and uncertainty, hanging between life and death while we dance to a diabolical yeah, tune composed of a mysterious traitor. You can count on me. Why? You could be the traitor too. Because I'm the only one who loves you. And because of that, I will never hurt you. There are others, others I must hurt. Millions of them. But not you. Never you. Haruka, you are the traitor, right? Dots. No. Then you know who he is? Yes, I knew right from the start. All the mysterious spreading of the plague of doubt inside your mind? I know the answers to all of them. Tell me. I cannot. Why? And why did you even bother mentioning it? To prepare you. Before the traitor will reveal himself, and you will need to make a choice. I want you to know who truly cares about you. She is a succubus, so... You care about me? Yes. I am the only one who does. Don't be swayed by anyone else. By anyone who says otherwise. Hey, stop right there. Two guards appeared at the end of the hallway. I just realized ours is blue. It's typically like different shades of the purple, right? Except for what's his name, who had, um, yellow. And then we have blue. Oh, must they ruin our private time together? No, that's... That's where we gotta make the save. Hell yeah! <laughs> well, Horace, my love, next time we will talk. Next time we will talk, you will already know who I am. Goodbye. Haruka's hands slowly started to glow in a bright green light. Magic? Indeed. The green light enveloped me with a soothing warmth. Stop what you're doing, I'll catch you. I'll see you on the other side. Sweet dreams. The whole world darkened and I was sucked into an endless warmth of the light. Dots. Huh? I'm in the basement again? Did I teleport somehow? Oh no, everything is so blurry. I'm so tired. So, so tired. My muscles are completely depleted of energy. All my body wants to do now is... Just to lie down and rest. I want to sleep. Horace. Horace, I'm here. A voice, Haruka? I think it's time to tell you all the answers. After you've truly seen me. Well, that was a planned encounter. We finally execute the most important part of my plan. I will ready my troops, but the most critical role belongs to you. The best I can do is check. You can... Only you can turn this into a checkmate. I will equip you with all the knowledge you... You need to convince her. Due to the limits of my powers, these demons can be forgotten. And thus, you won't remember anything I said to you. I will put it in your subconscious, though. So just think a little bit, and you will find the answers right away. You must be tired of me talking, so I'll get right to the main dish. My big secret is... Dots. Dots. Boo! That's a terrible secret! Whole bunch of dots? 
I could think of dots. Dots is the only thing I think about. <laughs> My brain is so empty. <laughs> I only think of dots. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I woke up on the floor, touched my forehead, and it was like I put my hand under a waterfall. The hot sweat covered my entire body. I suddenly realized how heavy my breathing was. No, it's not- I don't think I'm sick, so why am I sweating like crazy? Maybe because of a dream? More specifically, a nightmare. But for a nightmare to affect my body so much, it must have been a special kind of nightmare. If you know what I mean- no. Well, I don't have time to brood over nonsense like that. There are more urgent mysteries, like Haruka. Something really weird happened in the mansion. The face Haruka made after I accused her of killing Densai. She was truly surprised and confused for a moment. And she acted like the complete opposite of what I thought she would do. That total change in behavior. So that's why still exists. The Haruka I met in Alteria is still alive. And she loves me too. There is still hope, but a sudden change in her. It's almost like a double personality. And dissociative identity disorder was proved numerous times to be just an urban legend. Really? I remember hearing from someone there are real cases of a second personality. <sighs> Mental Illness and Other Lies was published 612 years ago by um, Sudais Kimaris. The question of dissociative identity disorder published 1,215 years ago by Kame Dentolian. Weird. I swear I remember dissociative identity disorder to be existent. But if they have studies published every 600 years about it, then I guess... Nah, double personalities were proved to be false multipl- Fuck. It was the logic horror- it was Logical Haruka who told me that dissociative identity disorder is non-existent. Of course she liked to cover it up. Someone knocked on the door. I was too hot of my own thoughts to notice. Thoughts. Why would she want to hide her other personality? Or maybe she actually believes that? I tried to put in the pieces together in my head. I tried her. Malik's death. The syringes in the carriage. Haruka's weird sleep schedule. The meeting with the invisible traitor. After all, it was agreed that Malik's death was to cover up the traitor. Haruka killed Malik. The traitor is the more important person than Norm. The door opened with a great force. Dude! If you're here, then say so! Oh, he also has blue. That wasn't blue, though! It was like a yellow, wasn't it? And his is such a light blue, too! Does everyone just have a different color in the middle? I don't know. My brain. I almost wrecked the door! Sorry, Mr. Door. Hey, what's with the gloomy face? Is it about Brother Jinsai's death? Mr. Haruka told me what happened. That bastard arm killed Jinsai while you didn't pay attention. Is that what Haruka told you? Yep. Why? Is anything wrong with that? Dots. Heh. Your face like an open book. It was a lie, right? Haruka probably killed him. Maybe an idiot, but I can read people pretty good. Especially the people I personally know. How can you say sh such a thing so casually? The real question is why are you taking it so hard? You're here to save your kingdom, right? You shouldn't care about some demon rando if some demon rando dies. The safety of your people should be your number one concern. As a prince of Altaria, you have responsibility toward the kingdom. You're right, but my head hurts too much to try to figure out what I truly want. By the way, what do you want? Me? Why do you want to kill the Demon King? Well, uh, promise me you won't be disappointed? It is some heroic mission to save the people of my kingdom or some optimistic ideology. I just think the king is the biggest asshole in the world. <laughs> but Sister Haruka is an asshole too. Yeah. But on a much smaller scale. Killing someone there, tormenting someone here, small stuff. 
But, and I'm saying that from an objective point of view, so don't judge me. At least the Demon King is kind to his underlings, I think. He won't ever betray them. That's right, because if Jensai wasn't there, it would have been me being Haruka's sacrifice. All his comrades, they're willing to fight and die for him. They become arms on their own will. Malak even let himself get stabbed to death by Haruka for the king. So even though his mission is to exterminate every human- Whoa, his mission is to kill every human? That makes me hate him even more. What do you mean? He slaughtered everyone in all human kingdoms but Altaria. Um, I think you need to check your sources, man. We have like a ton of human slaves in fields here in Purgatory. Like tens of millions of them. They're forbidden from leaving the Purgatory. It's like a huge work camp. But I totally thought that they- I mean, that's what everybody said back in Altaria. And Toshiaki said that too. He said that the war caused a lot of death and that's why he wants to stop it. I think he meant that the battles are full of death, like we have tons of human slaves. Oh. That doesn't matter. Slavery is just a little worse than death. Anyway, the king is a huge douchebag and that's why we need to kill him. Oh yeah. Kill the demon king. That reminds me. I was about to call you for a meeting. We need to plan the next step. Now that all the arms are dead. It's finally the moment we worked so hard for. Woohoo! Alright, I will be coming in a second. Have you told Sister Haruka and Brother Toshiaki yet? Sister Haruka is already there and Brother Toshiaki... He just told me to fuck off. Rather rude. Yeah, too busy with his preparations or whatever. Preparations? Yeah, that's how he phrased it. Well, see you there. Aizo almost destroyed the door again on his way out. Just had to be careful. Okay, I guess I'll go to the meeting too. On the way out, I stepped on some weird goo. Yikes. What the hell is this slime? I wasn't here before. Where'd it come from? And it feels similar too. Like I have already touched the slime somewhere. <sighs> Never mind. I shake the slime off my leg and exit the, r exit the door. <clears throat> As I walked down the dark corridor, a familiar figure approached me from behind. With the horse, good, just the person I wanted to see. What do you want? Come after me. I need to tell you something. Eh. Eh. Toshiaki went past me and headed for one of the doors on the far side of the corridor. This is Malik's room. Why are we here? It's not Malik's room anymore. It's Haruka's room. I told you I'm not changing my mind about- Really? After she killed Brother Jinsai? She killed someone who adored her very much. What do you think will happen to you? Dots. I already know she intended to use me instead of Jinsai. I took you to this specific room for a reason. Toshiaki pulled out one of the drawers and took a dagger from out from there. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Relax, I'm not going to kill you yet. Yet? I told you already, you, are the, you will be one of the targets if you shall continue to defend Haruka. Back to our main target, this is Haruka's knife. You know, being an expert necromancer does give me a lot of unique abilities. I can hear them, hundreds of them, they are screaming in agony and sorrow. So many souls were being tormented by this single dagger. Children too. As well as babies. You- you're lying, aren't you? Okay. Okay. Momo Salas, two years old, was killed in her mother's hands while putting her to sleep. Her head was cut clean from her body. Okay. I don't know if you guys heard it, but that like super loud and deep sound. There's like an airport nearby, I think, and planes fly like super like low and close to the house. Like the place that I record. 
So a lot of the time it's just like the super like loud and deep sound that like disrupts everything, my whole train of thought. So sorry about that. Alright, let's get clean from our body. Grusion Brado, four years old, was kidnapped in his sleep. After the negotiations for his return succeeded, his parents were sent a package. The package contained only his eyeballs. Renovo Bun? Bjorn? One year old. Enough, you're fabricating that. For how long will you deny the truth? A person like Haruka shouldn't be allowed to live. No. No, she's allowed to live. Even if she killed others, she still has the right to be right to be alive. That's afraid you would say that. If even a baby killer is redeemable in your eyes, then we have nothing to talk about. Very well. As soon as you will outlive your usefulness, I shall kill both you and Haruka. That is my final decision. Don't talk to me anymore unless it's necessary. Goodbye. Enemy! <laughs> and a necromancer, too! Fun! You will now have to be extra careful. After the Demon King is dead, I will just run away as soon as I can. Or kill Toshiaki. Haruka might help me. At least one of the Harukas. Distractions like Toshiaki aside. Now it's time for the final stage. Killing the Demon King. It all comes down to this. But first we need a plan. I walked out of the corridor and entered the meeting room. Someone was waiting there for me. Someone I was meaning to talk to. What up, baby? Dots. Dots. Haruka. Horus. Both said each other's name at the same time. We need to talk. Hmm. Seems like we minds look alike. I won't say that. Let's go to a more private place. Come after me. I know a good place. What about the meeting? It can wait. I will show you a place I really like. Haruka went out of the room and I followed. Horace, would you mind moving the fridge for me? You know I'm not exactly a muscle man, right? Um, bad CG beg to differ. Alright, then I will lend you my strength. With that combined power, Haruka and I pushed the fridge to the left. The hole looks like a giant rat lives here. I like it, I dug it myself. It's a little dusty. I hope you can endure it. I already went on two life-threatening missions. I think I can endure a little dust. A little dusty? My face and hands were covered in dust and I had a hard time breathing. The air had more dust than air. What's wrong? Forget it. If I open my mouth any longer, it would become a dust bowl. Nah. Battling the hardships, I continued climbing the ladder. It was about four minutes till I heard the sentence I longed for. We're here. Beautiful, isn't it? I look down. Wow, we're so high. All the demons are like small ants, and the buildings are like huts. It's pretty high up. I'm not so good with heights. I figured out you wouldn't be. Most smart rulers are afraid of heights, and for good reason. Do you know why I like this place? Why? We see everything from here. All the people seem like small, easy to squash insects. This place symbolizes power. It is a beacon of importance and influence. However, who could give me a small push? Uh, you, you almost threw your fall. You see it now for yourself, right? One small push, and you're gone. Horace, you and I are people who push others and then run off in the shadows. This place shows how power and influence directly translates into danger and death. It is the essence of assassination. Now, about the thing I want to talk to you about. Something abnormal happened to me earlier. Something so abnormal that you had to come to the rooftop to talk to me about it? You got me interested. I suddenly woke up in my bed this morning. The last thing I remember was when you pinned me to the ground in the mansion. Could it be that you have knocked me out? Now I am entirely sure about it. Perhaps I was given a sleeping drug by the traitor before the mansion. 
Haruka has another Haruka inside of her. Could it be an after effect of the Astrotheum? It should that shouldn't be possible, but maybe a special kind of Astrotheum I don't know about. And that Haruka definitely wasn't doesn't want Haruka to know about her existence. Well, at least for now. The conclusion drawn from that was far too obvious, and it's time Haruka and it's time Haruka will know it too. Dots. Although I already solved the mystery, unconsciously I ignored a significant part of the answer. Part of that makes the two reasons I came here contradict each other. And perhaps it could Haruka stop. Huh? Why should this time let me answer? I feel no I know what the answer is. What are you talking about? You are the traitor, Haruka. What is this nonsense? How do you even even reach that conclusion? Let me finish my sentences and I will and I will allow you to finish yours. It's not you who's the traitor, it's the other you. The other me? Sounds like the name of a rather disappointing book. Don't act dumb, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the dissociative identity disorder. I thought I told you that dissociative identity disorder is disproved a numerous amount of times by respectable researchers. I thought you told me not to assume anything. Even if that implies even if the past implies it is true. I vaguely remember something like that. Exactly. The other Haruka told me that. Wait, the fact that she says she kind of remembers doesn't align with my theory. If it was dissociative identity disorder, she wouldn't have known anything about what happened in Altaria. But that doesn't make sense. She had all the symptoms of dissociative identity disorder. Personality change and memory loss. You had both of them. What are you talking about? What memory loss? What personality change? I never knew anything about that. Of course you didn't, because you always lost your memories during the time where no new memories are made, during the night. Malak injected the astrotheum into you to cover up for your natural memory loss. We all thought you lost your memory because of the drug, but it was because during the night you were the other Haruka. What? During the night I, s I sleep. Sleeping at least 12 hours is crucial for my success. Then why do you always look so nervous and angry? You're tired, aren't you? Perhaps, maybe I didn't sleep well. I don't think so. I think you do other stuff rather than sleeping. Stuff that only the other Haruka knows. What proof do you have? What about right now? You said you don't remember how you got in here. And I remember that your personality totally changed. A single case could have been another reason. It's trying hard to deny the truth. The truth that she rejected from the start. You just don't want to admit that you're wrong. Is your price so important to you? See, you cannot give me any proof. Hence, you are not correct. I'm sure there is proof that I cannot break th through her so easily. Some kind of evidence. Dots. Oh, I got it. How didn't I see that? Alright, I have... Now I have conclusive evidence. Just spit it out. I don't have all the time in the world. Our time in Altaria. What about it? Do you remember it? Of course I do. Like when you figured out the trick with the apple and the poison? Apple? Wasn't it an orange? I'm pretty sure it was an apple. Are you sure about that? I'll ask you a few questions to make sure. Go ahead, my memory is flawless. What was the discount on all the items in the vegetable stand? The date location is the vegetable stand? Not just a normal vegetable stand. It has 75% off all items. Well, at least... In the last two hours, we were too late. I I don't remember, but I certainly do remember that we went to the st and the store was closed. You say we remember the whole thing, but not the little details. For someone who takes pride in her powerful brain, that's not very good. Hmm. What do you remember vaguely, no matter how good your memory is? Just give up, Horus. This doesn't prove anything at all. Damn it! I know I'm right. I just can't find any conclusive evidence. If I don't convince Haruka right now, then she will think I've gone mad and the other Haruka will stay hidden forever. I can't find anything, anything. There must be another reason for that. Damn it, damn it, damn it. She's getting further and further away. 
Soon she will say that it's no use talking to me. Something more logical. It's now or never. I think of a conclusive evidence the next minute or she will disregard me. I will lose all future opportunities to convince her. It's now or never. This whole double personality thing is a dream of yours. Wake up. It's true. I'm not dream dream dreaming. What was what was that shout? You were dreaming. It's obvious. Did you fall on your head? Think about it. What if you were dreaming all those memories on Altaria? Impossible. Why? Dots. Okay, maybe it's possible, but the probability is of that is infinitesimal. Not to mention, you don't have a single piece of evidence. It's a wild assumption. Good, then let me continue with these wild assumptions. I think that the other Haruka manipulated her dreams before she went to bed. And then while the other Haruka slept, it switched to you. And thus you experience all the memories of the day in your sleep. Again, even more wild assumptions to attest your crazy theory. Besides, you said I am only conscious during the day and the other Haruka during the night. So how could it be that I was conscious during the night in Altaria and the other Haruka during the day? Haruka, are you playing dumb just to create a logic gap in my theory? Night and day in hell and Altaria are reversed. So if you are conscious during the day here, you will be conscious during the night there. Fine, you got me there. But you still have a shred of evidence. Do I? I don't think so. Stop bluffing. I do remember everything in Altaria, not exact details, but still. Even if you find some details I don't remember correctly, that won't prove anything. And since I remember everything, you don't have a way to confirm your stupid theory. Like a flashing image, a smoking gun appeared before my eyes. Even though I... Even though the thought process to find it was supposed to be complex, I found it instantly. Like some kind of deity is powering up my brain and shooting ideas at me. No, I do have a way to prove it. Listen well. Maybe you will learn something. You dare to lecture me? Now that I finally had Haruka in the Battle of Wits, I'm going to enjoy it a bit. Yes, do you remember the last day we were in Altaria? Of course I do. Where are you going with this? During the day we teleported to hell when in the middle of the night there. I remember sleeping for two hours at most. So I imagine you slept the same hours I did since we both went to sleep at the same time. Now, I heard that during the sleep, the stage of dreaming usually comes after two hours. Which means that you were dreaming about a fraction of the memories of the day we left Altaria. I'm sure the other Haruka completed the other missing details later, but I want to focus on the day after we got to hell. The day where you only had partial memories. You surely remember that we chased after the thief in the sewers, right? Yeah. Now, try to remember the inside, inside the memories of the past Haruka. The Haruka that just arrived at Hell after a long trip in Altaria. Did that Haruka remember that we chased the thief in the sewers? Dots. No. I heard that, so you don't remember. That means that my theory is correct. Stop acting like a clown. Perhaps it's because you don't know much about magic, but no one can manipulate dreams to such a degree. No, there is someone. An incubus. What? Don't be absurd. There's no proof of the existence of an actual incubus. There is. Throughout all the previous nights, my dreams were manipulated by the incubus. That's insane. You are insane. Am I insane? My logic works. There must be some explanation. There has to be. Just give me time and... I see. So there's no way to convince you that I'm right. Looks like I will have to use that. Even against Haruka's will. My hand in my pocket strokes the dusty and crumbled cover of the book. Leave me no choice. Pull the book out. Haruka's eyes widen in surprise. Aristodia. The book opens by itself, emitting a creepy pale light. I can feel the power coming out off its pages. Aris, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Aris Theogia Geodia. Stop, stop right now. Marka pointed her dagger at me. Aris Paulina. The magic within the pages slowly penetrated my skin, flowing within my blood. So much power within one book, I could feel it. 
Whatever. I was just, just decline your attempt to slow my soul in half. Aris Almadl. No, you won't, Haruka, because deep within your heart you know I'm correct. Aris Notoria. The entire might of the book burst open. I felt the power leaving my body and going straight toward Haruka's direction. And that is where we are stopping. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully